These are 10 extremely promising cryptocurrencies that you need to acquire ideally before the 2025 bull run commences, which is most likely gonna be early 2024. So now is the time people to pay attention to this video. I'm not joking around. These are really, truly 10 extremely promising cryptocurrencies that I personally have recommended over the time, but most importantly are the ones that will see the most demand and therefore the most money coming into the market. Now I wanna say, I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail with each of these altcoins today. So I'm gonna try my best to hurry this video up so you get the most value for the shortest amount of time possible. Let me now take your attention over to the screen. And as you can see here, why urgently and why before 2025? Well, let's just cut the crap really quick, guys. It's easy enough to clickbait this sort of thing. It's easy enough for me to say urgently before 2025, I'll just throw some buzzwords around, but let me just tell you right now, I'm being 100% serious. If you don't own one, two, three, or look, honestly, ideally all 10 of these altcoins, depending on your personal investment strategy, I am telling you right now, you are missing out. Let me just quickly take you through this TLDR real quick, then we'll get into these altcoins very, very quickly, but it's important you pay attention, right? What we'll do well in 2025 is altcoins with a solid roadmap slash vision and that are unique or have a meme, okay? I talk about this quite a lot. So those of you who are new to the channel, I suggest you subscribe to find out what I'm talking about here. And of course, are primed to be set in sought after narratives. If you have these three things in a project, you are pretty well guaranteed as long as the, you know, overall market gods don't plummet the price of everything set to make some serious returns in the bull run. It's very, very simple, right? These three characteristics alone are significant enough to make you life-changing wealth in 2025 as we aren't quite at the stage yet of looking for altcoins that are purely utility or functional based, or at least focusing on the real world utility, right? They aren't actually good projects. Now, I wanna say for the most part, all the projects on this list do have this aspect, so they are quality projects, but I wanna say we don't actually have to look for this just yet, or at least until there's some global regulation in place, okay? Which might actually come in between now and then, but again, these projects are all suited towards this particular narrative, because right now it is a highly speculative market, right? We have lots of just pure speculation, all of this is just people's FOMO and a lot of degen FOMO as well, which we can take advantage of. Now, all of this will likely take place probably 2030. But again, these projects are going to be pivoting to both ends of the spectrum. Okay, so I want to say for the record, do not confuse high market caps with low returns. So all you degens out there, pay attention to this. And also, it's very important you never assume the quality of an altcoin with its previous price action. It is definitely a newbie's mistake. Now, now is, it, in my opinion, a really good time to DCA because ultimately, guys, Bitcoin is now under $26,000, just barely. As we can see, the last 12 months, yes, we've definitely been low. We've opened up the 12 month at $20,000. But I want to say for the record, this was when the massive, massive dump happened at the start of the year. And at least the last month, we've actually dropped a little bit. So yes, it is a good time at DCA. We might see some lower action. Before we continue with this video, I would like to thank the sponsor and that is great. Now, what is great? Well, essentially it's a brand new state-of-the-art, super fast layer one network built on top of what's called a DAG. Different to a blockchain, but much faster, allowing for the network to push of speeds up to and beyond 700,000 TPS. Now, the really unique aspect about great is that being tailored towards gaming and the metaverse it understands what it has to provide not just for developers but also for the end users it has amazing nft capabilities and also an inbuilt state of the art ai tool that allows it to be leveraged by developers to do low to no code tooling and also for end users to eventually use as well it's literally mind bending now i've made a full video on great you guys can go ahead and check that out in the description below but i want to say for a limited time guys there offering 10% bonus on their tokens if you go and sign up for free on their website and buy the tokens from there you can do so with the link below you must use my link though to get that 10% so with that being said thank you so much to great for sponsoring this video and with all that said let's get back to the video but nevertheless the first project is Mina Protocol now again using these three characteristics here while I can't go into like extreme depth with each of these projects because there are 10 this video will go for a very long time I want to skim through some of the most important important things that you guys can go ahead and research a lot deeper. I might even provide some links down below to my individual reviews. Nevertheless, Mina right now is basically at its all-time low. Matter of fact, I think it is at its all-time low. ICO was at 25 cents, which is when I got in. 
And yes, we are encroaching on that. I'm not even a 2x up right now, okay, guys? So very good time to buy. There is still some good rewards to have if you stake Amina tokens, but that's not the be all and end all. What's really truly unique about Amina is it's 22 kilobytes in size forever. The way the blockchain works through ZKPs, zero knowledge proofs, it can pretty much take snapshots of the previous state of the blockchain, which basically means it can say 22 kilobytes forever. There's some amazing things, right? Own your own data. It's completely private, right? It's a privacy focused network. Over here, access Mina from other chains. It's so small, you can access it within applications on other chains. You can extract real world data. So it has an inbuilt Oracle without the website even knowing you're extracting a value, which is extremely important. And every node is a full node because it's extremely lightweight, okay? And let me go on here. The roadmap is quite bullish. We have things like ZK apps coming on the mainnet. So they're uh, incorporating essentially smart contracts very soon. You can run Mina in Mina, compile any code to Mina, which is absolutely massive, especially for developers who have a specific um, code set, essentially, right? Ultra low latency coming up, instant finality, um, horizontal scaling, which means infinite scalability, which is massive. All of these things coming up in the next few months, if not few years, which should tee up perfectly for 2025, which is why I'm extremely bullish. For those who know about, you know, looking for good quality projects, again, as I said, we're looking for future, you know, roadmap events, incentives to, for people to want to buy in the project from a wider audience. We're looking for things like the meme, what stands out. Now, Mina is at the forefront of ZK Pink technology and also is privacy focused, which is a very, very good narrative. So all ticks all around here for Mina protocol. Now, next up, Another channel favorite here, Nia Protocol. I think Nia is a fantastic project. Right now, we aren't at its all-time low, but we're very, very close. The all-time low was way back over here, more or less about 2x down from where we are right now. But again, just like me, you know, that ain't too bad, okay? Click in the last 12 months, guys. We're at the bottom of the trading action. How damn good is that for a DCA price? Now, I want to say they recently migrated to BOSS, which is the blockchain operating system. Essentially, what Nia is now doing is competing with things like Ethereum, mainly pretty much like Cardano essentially, right? Or Solana, a pretty much general purpose network for crypto specifically, Web3, which is massive. It has some massive, massive upgrades coming up as well. Nightshade is their primary sharding or really scaling solution, which will allow it to be the network it wants to be, which is absolutely gonna draw in massive crowds come pretty much early to late 2024. As you can see here, phase two of sharding is gonna be scaling to 100 shards, which is absolutely insane with no validators tracking all shards because of the way it's designed. You don't have to have like a thousand validators. You can have like a hundred validators pretty much validating all those shards. It's kind of technical. I don't wanna go into it in this video. And the roadmap also goes through to 2024 with the delivery of phase three, which is it allows dynamic resharding, which is kind of over the scope of this video, it might go over a lot of your heads. Suffice to say, it will draw in massive crowds because a lot of influencers will most definitely be talking about this. Therefore, the price will accumulate overall and extremely bullish on Nia and the fact that it's focusing now on a very achievable market, okay? Next up, channel favorite guys, not other than Hedera HBAR. Now, HBAR's last 12 months trading volume, we're actually just beneath the 12 month open over here at about 6.2 cents. We're about 5.8 cents right now. I've always said to people, anything around the five cent mark is a steal, ideally under, and we definitely have been there since I've been preaching about it time and time again. But of course, guys, it is still a good DCA price in my opinion, just don't get FOMO. Now, HBAR is one of the best networks in the world, like right? in my opinion. It's essentially, and this is the analogy I always use, if you were a police station, for example, you had 99 pink people and one green person, who the hell are you gonna interview first? The green person, what are you doing here? Why are you the anomaly? And that's HBAR, okay? It just is above and beyond everything else and it stands out so much. Right now, it's finding its niche within the supply chain slash IoT world. It's got things like an average transaction of $0.001, finality of three to five seconds, which is extremely fast. It can actually scale to about 10,000 TPS and it's right now pushing anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 every single day, which is like pretty much one of the best in the entire space right now. It is looking to do some upgrades. I'll talk about that shortly. ABFT consensus, which pretty much means that you can actively have one third of the network attacking it consistently and it can still be making um, blocks or essentially the equivalent in, in the hash graph, right? 
and transactions can contain a timestamp or do contain a timestamp which means they are fairly ordered which means no matter what it's not like a blockchain where you can kind of move transactions around depending on how much gas you pay it's all completely fair which means games are going to thrive on hbar as well also it's evm compatible and get this it is extremely extremely cost effective one of if not the greenest blockchains or hash graph dlt essentially network out there and at that they also do offsets and so on and so forth there's been some massive news recently the roadmap is littered with some important updates we have sharding coming to the network again infinite scalability kind of like near protocol also they're enabling the community nodes coming up here as a priority and we also have some massive news one of the ecosystem uh, projects called drop is now a fed now pretty much payment provider or essentially a solution to for banks to use which means that Yes, you can use HBAR and some of these stable coins and connect that to the US financial system for instant payments. Absolutely massive. There's been a whole heap of good, more good news coming out of HBAR here, but of course we are time sensitive today. Next up is Quant. Now Quant's massive. You guys should know about this. Quant is one of my most bullish projects out there. Do not get confused with the supply. Yes, I've preached about this moments many, many times in the past. Yes, 14.8 million supply makes you think, hey, there's a massive supply and demand sort of things happening here. Don't get confused. It is crypto that doesn't exist. It is appealing to DGENs though, which actually does work in Quant's favor as well. Nevertheless, again, I don't want to get too technical in this video. Guys, the last month, we've pretty much been trading sideways. A slight tick up here, I suspect it will go down. Last 12 months, we've had our ups and we've had our downs. But most importantly, we pretty much almost are at the 12 month open, which obviously is a very good time to buy. Quant's pretty much a great buy at 100 bucks and under, in my opinion. And of course, it's had pretty much the biggest news besides the XRP news all year, right? So pretty much this project called Project Roslyn, where the Bank of International Settlements or the central bank of all central banks, it's got about 67 central banks under its wing. It facilitates transactions with, and these central banks, including Australia, kind of rely on the BIS to facilitate transactions and look to move forward in terms of what they do next in their own little world, right? And essentially, on the 16th of June, Project Roslyn officially announced the report, the successful report, where Quant actually interoperated with some of these um, networks here, or essentially companies, Amazon, Bank of Canada, Barclays, MasterCard, so on and so forth, to test a retail CBDC in the UK economy. Again, Amazon obviously would have replicated the economy. Bank of Canada would have replicated sort of a public sector transfers, central bank to central bank, MasterCard, online payments, so on and so forth. So essentially, Quant will be pretty much, I believe, used within the BIS to facilitate retail CBDCs, okay? Or essentially private to public sector transactions, which by the way, we're talking about like multi-trillions of dollars every single year across all these central banks. It's gonna be massive. And I believe it's come at a very important time. This report was again released on the 16th of June and not but 11 days later, guys, Quant releases openly to the, to the public their Overledger platform, which is, allows all this to happen. I believe that's because the BIS went to Quant and said, hey, you guys got to get this out now because when we want to launch in like 2030, we want to have as many companies using you guys as a service already to make it seamless. Pretty simple, self-explanatory, massive news. Now, next up is XLM. I'm going to have to try to hurry up here because we're already dwindling down time. XLM right now has had a bit of an uptick. Nevertheless, it's a fantastic project, guys. We are still pretty much at a good levels because I think XLM is going to make some massive strides. Why? Well, I think most of you guys know what XLM is. It's pretty much the sister net unofficially to XRP, but its 2023 roadmap is an indication of its 2024 slash 2025 plans as well. They're heavily focused on utility, which is very, very important. Things like pretty much upgrading their development layer called Soroban to allow smart contracts and pretty much to allow DeFi to flourish on the network. They're looking to scale and further decentralize the network as well, which is two very important things you want to hear in crypto. But they're also looking to win over builders, which is probably the most important thing here. They're looking to actually make an impact, not just in Web 3, but in Web 2. Actually providing a viable service for customers. And that's a very, very important thing. By the way, they're partnered with MoneyGram, which has like 430,000 individual locations, I'm pretty sure. Or at least staff. One or the other. Either way, it's probably one of the biggest partnerships these guys could possibly have. Trust me when I say it's going to be massive, okay? Don't let the $3 billion or so dollar market cap throw you off. Now, the next project we have is VeChain. Now, VeChain is obviously a layer one blockchain. It started life as a consortium network. So it started life next to the likes of 
you know, R3 Corda uh, Quorum and Hyperledger Fabric. So it's one of the big, big giants and obviously has a you know primary focus over here on supply chain management. Right now, the last 12 months, we pretty much are at lows, guys. So we are very, very close. And actually, if you click all over here, you know, we aren't quite at these levels yet. But let me tell you right now, for back 2018, 2019, 2020, it actually isn't too bad at all. Very, very high standards coming through for VeChain. It actually is partnered with China. It's looking to develop the supply chain management in one of the Chinese sort of like cities where they're focusing on like payments and the like future of uh, essentially, you know, integrating blockchain technology and all this sort of technology within you know, smart cities essentially right now. It's extremely interesting because VeChain has a very, very interesting sort of utility option here with its um, economic model, right? So it has a, a two-sided token economic model here where it uses VThor as like a gas token, right? But it's interesting because VThor is natively created. It's generated by holding v VEP tokens, right? VeChain's token itself. So this incentivizes hoarding of the VeChain tokens to get free gas. So it's a massive, massive bonus, I believe underrated a lot of you v chain holders out there know the true power of this model but what's truly amazing is recently they've partnered with singularity net to come out with this sort of ai sustainability model where they're now sort of interoperating this or at least integrating this within this the biosphere which is massive okay it's pretty much bringing um improved sustainability needs to this which is supply chains connecting different ecosystems together or at least supply chain ecosystems looking to make that a lot more seamless therefore reducing emissions and sort of kind of getting rid of like these old school methods where, you know, they're pretty cumbersome and require lots of energy or multiple levels of inflows and outflows and kind of making it a one singular seamless process, but then connecting all of these together, all these different businesses and ecosystems under the guise of, you know, applications and DeFi, you know, different connecting technologies, IoT tagging, hardware, VR, and also all pretty much under layer one blockchain technology, open sourced if they want it to be, okay? So yes, VeChain is most definitely a centralized network, right? It's delegated proof of stake, very, very centralized. So it doesn't really fall under the ethos that most of us would know crypto to be, but it's still a very good play in my opinion. Again, it started life as a consortium network. Next up, we have Chainlink. Now guys, Chainlink's on the plummet. It's coming down to underneath the open for the last 12 months and it's pretty much been trading within this price range so yes we are now coming down to really good levels at least in my opinion and i've been preaching telling for a long long time now why well because they're upgrading the network significantly and they already have actually one of the first things they're doing is increasing the value capture one thing i've said time and time again on this channel they're expanding the chain link network monetization model they've been processing billions of you know um, bits of data essentially but they haven't really been able to absorb that through the token because they are a smart contract on ethereum but now they're looking to upgrade this to economics 2.0 which means yes if you're a holder now we actually will start to see some relatively good price action compared to how much the network is being used also if we scroll down here some really important things as well real world asset tokenization because they have so many endpoints in the real world back into web3 they're like right in the center and perfect for tokenization. So they're focusing on this and also CCIP or essentially the interoperability protocol is now active and they're working to interoperate that within the entire crypto ecosystem. Basically, long story short, these guys are literally gonna be a powerhouse. You are kidding yourself if you're sleeping on uh, Chainlink and I guarantee you a lot of you are gonna laugh at me for saying that, but you're gonna be very, very wrong. Next up is Polkadot. One of the, my all time favorites and yes, it's gotten even better because they're upgrading the network, which is actually an extremely good upgrade, right? So right now the price is about $4.50, which as you can see for yourself is basically the all time low for the last 12 months. If you're not buying DOT, not financial advice, you are kidding yourself right now. It is an extremely cheap project from where it has been and where it will most definitely go if we click all over here. Guys, we are pretty much at the prices back here at 2020. You are laughing if you're not looking at this. And why? Well, because one, of course, it's a good narrative, interoperability, layer zero, layer one technically as well. So many good um, aspects to the network as well, but also they are upgrading and getting rid of this sort of parachain old cumbersome model I didn't mind it, but actually in retrospect, looking at what they're upgrading to now and the problems that that actually created, it makes so much more sense because you had to bond a lot of dot, which pretty much meant the most funded person wins. And what that does is push away the small guys that might actually have a good product. And then they go to different networks and build on different networks. This now is sort of like what Parathreads were doing, right? Pay as you go. So if you use the network resources, you pay for the network resources. I love it. It's a great upgrade. And I think it was a really, really good move on Polkadot's. So I think there's gonna be a lot of more growth still to come for DOT. And second to last, we have XDC. Now I'll be talking about XDC for a while now. 
Guys, right now at 5.1 cents. Yes, it's up a little bit from the average of about 3 cents where it was back here. A little bit under that over here. But I do want to say, guys, if this project does fall below 4 cents, it is a fantastic steal. Why? Because out of all the projects on this list, I would say XDC is the one that could see the highest gains because they're actually planning, or at least from what we're seeing right here with this uh, bill being released over in the UK, these guys might actually find the most amount of adoption in Web2 the fastest, the soonest. Now, the only player in this sort of sector, which is the trade finance sector, which is pretty much untouched right now in Web2, there's no adequate solution. And these guys basically are at the forefront, not just in Web3, as I said, in Web2 as well. They're pretty much making essentially trade finance acceptable from small, micro small, right up to large enterprises, you know, domestically or across the world. So trust me right now when I say XDC is a sleeping giant, and I still believe it is, even with its recent price action, okay? Now, I want to say they also do have some really bullish things up their belt. They're actually the public network for R3 quarter, which if you listened to me earlier, is again a consortium network, which means these guys have some massive players up their belt. To be exact here, and I know this screen's blurry, I do apologize. Citibank, Commonwealth Bank, we have, where is it over here? HSBC, we have Amazon, Intel, Oracle, Microsoft. And this is an old, very, very old outdated list, might I say as well. So yes, XDC allows the facilitation of any sort of public interactions with these tokens, with these companies essentially. And if we come back over here to this, which is Impel, one of its um, sort of ecosystem applications that allows the bridge to happen, it allows any of the, where are we over here? Core dApps on the private quarter platform to use XDC or importantly, the US plus stablecoin, which actually will provide a lot of value for these networks that want to actually interact with each other and do transfers, unlike they could before, right? Seamlessly leveraging crypto through XDC, massive stuff. And last, but let me just say definitely not least, one I don't talk about enough is XRP. Now, doesn't need any introduction. You guys are probably fully well aware of what XRP offers. A lot of you criticize it, I am one of those people who have in the past, but I do definitely think XRP hands down is one of the most promising networks out there. Whether it's adopted or not, I don't know. It definitely has the most connections by far. My only concern, if there is gonna be a concern at all, is how intimate the XRP token is used within the network itself. Nevertheless, guys, again, it has the most connections by far. It most definitely is one of the biggest cryptocurrencies and probably will be for a very, very long time. And this just goes to show why they somewhat recently, at least this year, acquired a startup called Medical, which pretty much expands their potential in a lot of different regions around the world. Guys, that is going to do this video. I really do appreciate you watching. Thank you for sticking with me the whole way through. I am back. Yes, I did have a bit of a hiatus. I am upgrading the channel so significantly. It's going to be completely different place in a couple of weeks. You guys are going to absolutely love it. And I was also sick for four days. Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.